Yeah. Good morning, everyone. We are back on the second day of the Coffee Symposium Digital um, within the Intergastra Digital 21. And we are happy to have you all here with us. And we welcome now on the second day, which is uh, under the topic of coffee cultivation, um, Dr. Björn Schäfer, leader from the Botanical Garden Wilhelma in Stuttgart, mm. Germany, uh, who will present us the international conservation collection of coffee varieties and uh, give us a review of what happened in 2020, apart from the pandemic, and uh, also some future perspective. I'm very happy to have you here today, uh, um, Dr. Schäfer. And uh, yeah, nothing more to say than the stage is yours. Okay, thank you. Um, so it's a pleasure to be here. I just want to know, can you hear me? Yes, excellent. Okay. So um, as you already said, um, my name is Dr. Björn Schäfer. I am the head of the Department of Botany at the Wilhelma in Stuttgart and my presentation is about our project International Conservation Collection of Coffee Varieties the Helma. Um, I'm going to give a short review of 2020 and some future perspective. So can you still hear me? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to continue. I'm at home at the moment because of Corona, so it's a little bit difficult. I'm sharing the room with some guinea pigs right now. Okay, so about our project. Um, we are a botanical garden situated in Stuttgart, Germany, and we are ruled by the government of Baden-Württemberg in Germany. A couple of years ago, we had the idea and we started um, a scientific in vivo collection of coffee varieties. As you may know, there are other botanical gardens which collect wild um, species, but we decided to collect varieties um, because we think that uh, those over centuries selected plants are sometimes more vulnerable to mankind than preserving only the wild species. So if I'm asked why, I always um, give one example. Um, you can preserve the wolf. Um, so then you have preserved all genes for all dog races of the world, but you don't have conserved uh, the corgi, the greyhound, or the German shepherd. So we think it's important to conserve uh, those varieties. Our aim is to build a platform for coffee farmers and scientists to share knowledge and to exchange coffee varieties. Here's a review of 2020. In 2020, uh, many things happened. Um, we started in February with the Intergastra. In March, we started a cooperation with Identex, Applied Molecular Biotechnology. Um, they are working with genetics. In uh, August, this was very important for us. We got the permission of the Ministry of Rural Affairs and Consumer Protection to use the official logo of the government for our project. In September, there was a radio report um, called in German, Vielfältige Kaffeesorten mehr als Arabica und Robusta. This was in SWR2 in the public radio, and it was 27 minutes, so this is quite long for a radio report. Then in October, we gave uh, plant material to Macarena San Martin Ruiz at the Institute of Sanitary Engineering, Water Quality and Solid Waste Management. Um, 
their research is about the emission of um, laughing gas nitrous on coffee plantations. So I won't be able to um, give you any results from this project because it's still going on. The last year's Intergastra um, was very important for us because until this day, we just um, did our job behind the scenes and at the Intergastra, we entered the stage and we presented our collection for the first time to the public. So it was very interesting for us to see what's going to happen. Um, as you can see, the Minister of Rural Affairs, Peter Hoke, uh, the man in the middle with the glasses, visited um, our exhibition stand. So we were very proud about this. And on this day, he decided that it's um, important to support the project. Um, I'm going to talk about this later on. On the left hand side, um, you can see the Helma Cafe. So we had been able by the support of Dr. Stefan Schwartz um, to introduce our own Helma Cafe. Um, this is important because I told you that um, we belong to the government. So um, if we need money, we can not only um, take it from, from wherever we want. So um, we had the possibility um, yeah, by the financial gain of this coffee, um, we can develop other projects. As I told you, there was this radio report. I'm sorry um, for most of you because it's in German. But it was a very good report um, by Andreas Langen. So if you're able to understand German, um, I've added the link below the picture. Just um, listen to it. Um, I think it's worth. So here you can see um, the certificates. We are very proud uh, on this. Um, we have de developed for all project partners. Um, we have gold, silver, and bronze partnerships depending on the number of species or the amount of money being introduced into our project. On the left hand side, you can see the certificate for a gold, gold medal donor. So, um, Facenda Dutra gave many um, different varieties to the collection. So they received the certificate. The next and I think very important step will be that um, we go business cards. On one side of the business card, there will be my contact data, um, hopefully together with the link to a micro home page about the project, which is not finished right now, but I think we are going to. Um, achieve this um, together with Stefan Schwarz. On the other side, there will be the name of the partner. For example, you can see below um, Jakob Mamen from Badra Coffee. I think it's an important step um, even for the partner in the country. So if they want to tell what they are doing, um, they can use those um, business cards. Our partner at the moment are Amarella Trading, Badra Estates, Earthlings Coffee Workshop, EC Success Food Sarl, Facenda Stutra, Fai Cafe, Finca Hamburgo, Photo Design Simon, Identex, La Buena Esperanza, Neckar Restaurant, Paltope Estate, Pang Mali, Reka Yaya Plantation, Dr. Wolfram Rietschel, and the coffee store. Here's a map of all origins of coffee varieties um, we have received till now. Um, and now we're going to have a closer look to our scientific collection. As you can see, we have partners in 
El Salvador, Mexico, Brazil. In, um, we received material from Uganda, from Ethiopia, um, from India, Thailand, Malaysia, and China. So as I told you, a closer look to the scientific collection. Um, you don't have to read it because it's rather small. Um, if any uh, one of you is interested in the complete list, um, you can receive it as a um, PDF. Um, but I just want to tell you um, some details how we work scientifically. So at the moment, we have 99 species and varieties. And for each um, species or varieties, we have to generate a so-called IPEN code. The IPEN code of conduct for botanical gardens and similar collections governing the acquisition, maintenance, and supply of living plant material. This project is worldwide and is joined at the moment um, of 211 institutions in 35 countries. For example, the Wando Arboretum in Singapore, the Missouri Botanical Garden, or the Botanical Garden at Cartagena in Colombia. We hope that um, sooner or later, um, all countries in the world are going to participate in this project. So what we do is that um, we generate a number. You can see there, for example, XXO Stutz. 015592. So this is the IP number connected to an accession of the variety Katisik of Coffee Arabica given to us by Finca Loa Buena Esperanza in El Salvador. All partners use the same system. So if you look to the number, you can see XX. That means that the origin is unknown because it's a variety. If this would be a plant from the wilderness and um, for example, from Ethiopia, um, there would be the code for Ethiopia. Then there is um, O, this indicates no restriction on transfer or non-commercial use. If any one of you would give us, for example, a special variety, and he tells us that this variety maybe is from his grandfather and he doesn't want that it's um, shared, then uh, on this place there would be one instead of O. So this means um, it's not allowed to give it to anyone else without the per permission. Stutz is the unique garden code of the institution that first introduced the material to IPEN. So as you can think, um, this means Stuttgart. Um, Stutz because it's Stuttgart zoological. So Botanical garden. Um, all the garden which joins the project can be found on the Big ECE website under garden search. 015592 is our specific identification. So, why is this so important? Um, all um, partners which join this project um, keep this number. So um, any other IPEN members receiving material with such an IPEN number are obliged um, to keep the original number and to forward it with any future transfer of this material to third parties. So if we give um, a variety to any other scientific institution or botanical garden, um, they keep the same number. So even after years, it's just always um, possible to find out where these plants came from. Um, usually it's perfect uh, if you even have uh, the GPS data, um, but so you can always find um, the origin of the plant. Now I want to show you um, some uh, new entries from last year. I decided um, to I think these are the most interesting from last year. Um, one were given to us in February um, at the Indagastla. So you see it's important um, 
to meet each other at the Intergastra um, by Enjo Kantagiani. It was wild coffee Arabica from the Mankira forest at the Desha district in Kaffa, Ethiopia. I think most of you know that this area um, is said to be the origin of, or the possible origin of coffee Arabica. So it's very vulnerable for us. The second one is, um, had been given to us from Dr. Wolfram Rietschel in March 2020. It's an unidentified variety of coffee Arabica from Urakidane Meret. I don't know how to pronounce it because it's from Ethiopia. I hope it's okay. Um, at the um, Sege Peninsula at the Lake Tana in Ethiopia. This might be something very, very interesting because um, on this peninsula, um, there's an Orthodox monastery. And this convent was founded in the 14th century, and they are um, still there. So if they started to cultivate coffee varieties or even to um, develop new varieties, um, and they still grow it, this might be a very, very old variety. Now I want to show you some of the scientific um, things we are working on together, as I told you, with Identex. Um, so what they did for us is a PCR-based variety differentiation. Um, they started with different methods. First, um, they checked simple DNA. Uh, so this is not right. So um, just ignore this and start um, at the beginning. They started with DNA barcoding and they tested Canephora species um, and found out that it was possible to um, differentiate them from Arabian species. But I think this is no surprise. Then they checked um, if Arabian varieties could be differentiated and this was negative. In a second step, they started with DNA profiling, but the result was the same. The biggest problem is that it's not um, possible <coughs> to distinguish or differentiate between the Arabian varieties, which would be the most interesting. Finally, um, they decided to check fragment length analysis, FLA, and this seems to be successful at the moment. So they had first indications of the discriminability of Arabic varieties. I'm going to show you um, how they work in detail and what they received from us right now. So at the beginning, you we are now at the FLA. Um, at the beginning, they received different parts of the plants, and it was no surprise that um, to optimize the analysis, um, the leaves um, worked um, best. Um, so they received um, leaves from different varieties um, with the name we know. Um, they repeated the test with samples from different plants of one variety. So, for example, they got different uva um, plants from us, and they checked if the signal of uva was always the same to be sure that um, they didn't identify um, an individual plant, but a variety. So this was successful, and right now they are in the stage of checking the results with blank samples. This means they came back and they received um, leaves from coffee plants from us, um, but no names. So we know the name of the variety. Um, and now they have to check it with their data and tell us which numbers, which variety. If this is also successful, then it seems to work. 
And then they're going to start um, to check the results with samples of other varieties. And finally, um, they're going to work with mixed samples. For example, if you buy coffee raw beans, um, this might be a mixture of different varieties. And it's interesting to find out if you can identify in the mixed sample um, each variety. So um, the future aim of this um, scientific project is um, if you look at the scientific side, we would like to generate a family tree of all varieties of coffee arabica based on FLA. Possible applications would be, for example, um, is the variety Bourbon in Latin America still the same variety in Asia? So we know that um, some of the varieties are quite old and uh, they share the same name, but um, they have grown on different continents for a very um, long time. So maybe there are already uh, differences. Um, another possible application would be, is it possible to find in local African varieties, often only with local names, mother plants of modern varieties? <laughs> so I showed you, for example, the Ta uh, Lake Tana. So it would be very interesting to find out if the cultivated varieties there um, are maybe the origin of other varieties in other countries. Economic, um, I think it would be very interesting for many of you um, because we would like to establish a method of identifying uh, Arabia, Arabica varieties based on the raw bean. This is a problem at the moment because um, in the raw bean there are many other chemical ingredients which disturb the signal. So if we can find out how to do this, um, this is going to work much better. Um, how you can use it? I've got two examples. If there's a plant on your farm and you don't know the variety, you can send it to us and the variety will be identified. At the moment, this works only with the leaves. Um, and if it's a variety which is already in the data bench. Other possible um, application, if you have bought a certain variety of raw coffee and you want to know if the beans really belong to the variety you have paid for, um, you can give us the beans and we check if this is really the variety. Um, here you can um, see a map of the historical distribution of coffee. Um, we would like to get in contact with more coffee farmers worldwide. Um, and it would be great to find new partners in those countries where we expect very old or rare varieties. Um, I am going to show some example. It would be very, very interesting to get um, varieties from Yemen, because I think this is the first place where coffee had been brought to. Then um, from Sri Lanka, um, where we know that the first plants arrived at 1658 um, by Dutch people. Um, we would like to find a partner on Réunion in former times Ile de Bourbon, where we know the plants from Yemen came to, um, and we were very, very interested to find a partner in Martinique, because you all know this story that there was this one plant brought to Martinique between 1722 and uh, 20 and 1723, and this one um, plant um, might be the origin of most of the Latin American varieties. And um, then finally, um, this is something special for us and it's quite new. Um, we would like to find a partner in a special um, area in Tanzania 
And this is because of a man called Rudolf Ganser. <laughs> because um, we are just working on coffee, even in historical database and at the Landesarchiv Baden-Württemberg. So it's a general archive uh, for Baden-Württemberg, for Germany. Um, we found a diary of a um, person called Rudolf Ganser. He was a lieutenant in the former German colony Deutsch Ostafrika between 1896 and 1897. And he describes a coffee plantation called Leva. This might be a mountain or a town or anything um, where they produced coffee Liberica. And it would be great to um, find this place, um, to have also these um, plants which are historically connected with uh, Wilhelma and Stuttgart um, in our collection. So if any one of you is going to Tanzania, if this is possible after Corona, um, just um, don't forget us and ask if anyone knows the plantation of labor. So this is already the end of my short presentation of our project. If you've got any further questions, just let me know. Um, thank you for your interest. And I would like to say thank you to all of our partners and supporters worldwide. Um, I hope that you are all OK. And um, I hope to see you live next time on Intergastra. If you need contact, so here my, no, sorry, this is wrong. Um, if you need my data, um, just let me know and I'm going to send it to you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Schaefer. I think this was a great and, and uh, inspiring uh, presentation. Um, I think uh, the project is yet, uh, largely unknown and uh, we hope to spread uh, the idea uh, much much more in 2022 so in the past year but due to corona as we all know um, we were very limited i'm very sure this is uh, falling on fertile grounds i can also see that uh, there are enough people joining us there's also Ennio Cantagiani who brought the one uh, seed to the collection. Yeah. He's with us here and uh, Dr. Lachenmeier. So a lot of um, scientists that are uh, actually uh, trying to do as, as, as much as we can to get some uh, new varieties. So despite Corona and despite the fact that we cannot travel, uh, let me at least announce that I, I'm very positive that we will reach the number of 120 uh, species and varieties this year because I already have uh, uh, two new students in uh, El Salvador at the moment and they are uh, getting through different variety collections there and uh, thus uh, it should definitely help to uh, get over the 100 and uh, make it 120 because then at least we have 10 per month to exhibit <laughs> and, uh, to have a nice number. So thank you so much for your presentation. There will be some questions coming up soon. And um, so um, let's maybe uh, start with a uh, very general question to you. So um, uh, you mentioned it, but I think it cannot be mentioned of enough. Uh, is it possible like for every company? I'm also uh, thinking we have a lot of uh, coffee companies uh, following us here now, or maybe roasteries, maybe coffee machine makers. And they say, OK, we might not have seeds, but is there any other way to join and support uh, the variety collection in Stuttgart? Maybe if you could answer that. Yeah, as I already um, told you, um, we have got two different ways to support the project. Um, at the beginning, sorry for the haircut. Uh, it was my son because you know that um, the hairdresser in Germany are closed at the moment because of Corona but I like it. Um, okay. Um, yeah, you can support us um, if you are a coffee grower just by giving us um, varieties. But if you say that it's a good project and you want to support the project, um, you can support us in any way. Um, you can um, donate us money. Um, 
Uh, you can also just say, um, um, I've got an institute and I will do some research for free. For example, Itentex uh, support us just by their knowledge and by the laboratory and their work. Um, so whatever you want to do, you can do it, but you can um, always have to remember that we are ruled by the government. So it's just, um, just possible on any public um, publical way. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Schaefer. I also see that, uh, uh, meanwhile, Thomas Bruno Edelmann from Mexico has joined us. I think he has a good, strong cup of coffee with him because I feel it's around four o'clock in Mexico yeah. now. So, uh, dear Thomas Bruno, I'm very, very sorry we, we kind of... Uh, <laughs> Um, asked you to do that presentation at that time and probably when you agreed to do it you were not 100% aware of uh, this very mean timing we choose here in Europe but uh, I hope you will forgive us and uh, uh, as we know your farm uh, I think uh, I think Hamburgo is also among the, the gold uh, uh, sponsored donors I think so you're also one of the very very important uh, uh, partners from the very beginning and um, there will be The next presentation coming up now, so as I see there, ain't uh, more question. That's always good, like my old boss would say. That means the presentation was very clear. Let's just hope that now there is enough uh, new seeds uh, coming up. Uh, important, do not just send seeds to Dr. Schaefer, but make sure that you really know where they come from. Um, yeah. You really have to be sure of the origin. There is no need to just give any seeds and a speculation about the variety that doesn't help. Uh, it really needs to be sure what it is and where it comes from, at least where it comes from. If it looks weird and strange, then at least note where it comes from and say that you don't know exactly what it is. Uh, you can also give some suspic uh, su suspicion about it and say people think it is this and this or they call it that and that name. That's all okay, but it has to be very clear where it comes from. Uh, because otherwise uh, we are creating more trouble to Dr. Schaefer and his team than we are actually helping and creating more confusion in a, in a uh, correct research doesn't help. Yeah. So thank you again, uh, Dr. Schaefer. I think you, you're going to stay with us for the other presentations. So in case there are some more questions, we will probably be able to reach you. Otherwise, we will also collect uh, the questions and uh, then also send them forward to you or... Um, hand forward your contact details and uh, i think thomas bruno is is uh, more and more getting awake